Ooh, chapstick and blistex. Always a favorite. All right, let me just make sure everything here is set up correctly. Oh, man, just look at the quality of the webcam. I'm so happy. I got a brand new webcam. <laughs> I've got just the regular mic I've been using, but this looks so much like nicer. So you can actually see my face, which is why I was waiting for now to do like a live get ready with me. <laughs> so um, I think I did a pretty good job of in the description box, making sure I listed everything that is going to be Technically, I'm going to be doing a live Get Ready With Me, but I'm also going to be talking about my favorites for the last two months because I have not done a favorites video since, I believe, May. And I believe for May, I really made that a, a quarantine favorites video. So I really just want this to be like a regular, you know, down to earth what I'm currently using, you know, makeup wise. Not really skincare because I'm planning a skincare video the next couple of weeks. So not skincare, um, but really just makeup uh, brushes. We talk a lot about makeup brushes as I go along and... Yeah, and I'm just now realizing I did not wet my beauty blender. So we are going to have to improvise there <laughs> or run or I'll, I might run downstairs and wet it real quick. I might have to do that because I just realized I never did that. So anyway, making sure everything is set up. <laughs> let me. Uh, let me see. I also, you know what? I've got a spray bottle back here. I'm going to grab that real quick. <laughs> And there we go. <laughs> that was my bad for not setting that up beforehand. But, um, so yeah, so I was saying before, I basically have in the description box all of the favorites that I'm going to be really talking in depth about. So they're already listed there. And since I did not wet my beauty blender, I'm just wetting it now. <sighs> and, you know, I have already planned out what I want to do face makeup wise, like for my base and everything. But uh, I'm still on the fence about what I want to do for my eyes. So we will do this. Um, well, we'll, do, we'll, we'll wing it. <laughs> we will just wing this whole thing. Uh, let's see. Oh, Brooke's here. Hi, Brooke. Brooke said you wet your beauty blender. Sorry, that's a noob question. No, you really don't. I mean, it depends on the beauty blender. I call it a beauty blender when it's not really. This is the Shop Miss A, the black teardrop sponge. I wet 90% of my sponges. There is one sponge from like e.l.f. I think it's e.l.f. where I can use it wet and dry just because of the texture of it. And um, that one I don't have to wet. And I would have used that, <laughs> quite honestly, if it wasn't a favorites video that I was doing right now because I'm specifically going to mention this sponge. <laughs> so that was me not planning ahead, even though I thought I had planned ahead. <laughs> uh, Oh, Parnika said, it's a good evening for me now. Yay, I'm glad to have you here. Oh, I'm, I'm excited to finally have like a decent webcam and to do a get ready with me. So like I mentioned, I have a bag full of what I pulled as my favorites from the last couple of months slash weeks. And we're just going to do a get ready with me. So first, I'm going to start with primer. And one of my favorites is a primer. So let me just empty out this little bag. Do -do -do. All right, so this primer that I've really been liking recently is this one from Milani. And this is a um, Rose Prep and Brighten face oil. It's actually well, like a third of the way gone. I purchased this on, was it Depop or Poshmark from someone? And it's just such a nice, all oh, the packaging is gorgeous to begin with. It's a nice glass bottle and then it's got kind of like a little dropper here. And the way I apply this, I know you're not supposed to touch anything directly to your face, but I just kind of drop it, drop it, and then drop it. And since it's an oil, it really does spread pretty far. So I just do that. And then I like going in with my first favorite brush. And this is from e.l.f. This is a Selfie Ready Foundation brush. I don't like this for foundation, but I love it for primer. <laughs> and for this like facial oil, it just works perfectly. So I just blend this in. And one thing I will recommend, make sure you blend this in before it hits your eyes. I, I accidentally got this facial oil in my eyes, which I didn't mean to. It was an accident and it was horrible. <laughs> really bad. So I also wear this oil on no makeup makeup days. Like if I'm just going to do eye makeup and then if I have to go out and like wear a mask, um, this just gives me a nice glow and keeps me hydrated. 
and it smells just like roses. It smells really nice. There we go. So look at that glow. It's so pretty. So that's been my favorite primer since I got this. And I've had this for like at least a month now. And I've been using it just about every day since I got it. It's a really good um, primer. I've seen this at a couple of CVSs and Walgreens. I bought mine online because it was technically um, secondhand. Like someone either bought it and didn't want to use it. So they sold it new. Or it was like a subscription box or something. It's, it's, and they got it in some way that they didn't actually want to use it. So I bought it cheaper. Even though with Milani, it was actually pretty affordable to begin with. So now that we've got the primer done, I like to let it sit just a little bit since it is an oil. It's actually better if you do this maybe like half an hour before you do the rest of your makeup so that it fully sinks in. While I get the rest of my brushes out, maybe throw a little bit of lotion on because my hands have just been so dry recently. So dry. Alrighty. For foundation... The foundation isn't a favorite. It's one I'm still testing out, but I didn't have anything that I was like really keen on recently at least. So I just wanted to continue testing this one. This is from Stellar, which I actually didn't really know about this brand pretty much at all until like super recently. And I bought this on Depop. So it was pre-used. It was slightly, I think the person who got, who had this used it once or twice and then they sold it. Um, so it's got nice packaging. It's got a nice big um, pump. And I really like the packaging. The formula itself seems a little like liquidy. It's not the most, uh, yeah, I guess the thing that's the best way to put it is that it's pretty liquidy. Um, and I have worn this a few times and it's been really wishy-washy for me. Like some days at the end of the day, it looks really nice. It looks really even. As soon as I apply it, it looks gorgeous. But like really depending on the day, <laughs> it can look different at the end of the day. So to apply this, since this is actually a decent skin tone match to me, I don't really have to mix it, thankfully, because I'm so pale. I'm going to be using this AOA Studio uh, brush, and this is such a good dupe for, I do not have it with me, but the Sigma um, F80 Kabuki brush. So this is smaller. I also, I don't mind it being smaller because I have small hands, so I can use this. And it's just like a nice flat top Kabuki. This came in a set of 10, and these are all like bamboo kind of brushes. This is really the only one so far. There are a couple that I like. This, this is the standout one. This is a great brush, and this set was $10, so it comes out to basically a dollar a brush. So I'm just going to squirt the foundation and we're going to go to town. <laughs> and this is a better foundation match for me than most, though I am going to look really pale until we get to like bronzing. <laughs> so we're going to bring this down, just down the neck a little bit, and then I'm going to grab my mirror need a little bit. There we go. So it's pretty thin when you apply it like this. And also the primer does thin it out a bit because I did go in with a very oily, obviously it was an oil primer, but I love the primer and the way that it works on my skin. And I'm going to press this in kind of like this. Do, do, do. And also, I'm basically going to go through my base routine, which has been, like, my kind of go-to base routine as of late. <laughs> there we go. We're going to bring a little bit more. And I'm just going to tap this. Because I do like more coverage here. You saw earlier, this is kind of where I get red. And thankfully, I don't really have any breakouts right now. Um, I do have a couple, like, down here. <laughs> but nothing really too bad. I'm gonna bring what's left up here and then I'm gonna go in with my sponge because this foundation, I don't know if you can see, I do have brush marks. This is what it looks like for um, most foundations that I wear that I apply with the brush. I always like going with the brush to like kind of first apply it and then smoothing it out with the sponge. And the sponge is one of my also favorites. This has been, and I think in more of my favorites videos than I think anything else. This is the Shop Miss A, a teardrop sponge. It's a dollar. It's better than the Beauty Blender. It's amazing. So I just go in and just kind of smooth everything out.
And then I look at what else I might want to cover. I don't want to put any more here because I'm going to go in with concealer. But like on my forehead, I think I want a little bit more. Just a little bit. So I'm going to take, just take one more drop. And boop. <laughs> blend, blend, the blendy. And I thought, so the light behind me, I have a set of blue. I thought it would show up a little bit more. But I can't say that, like, I'm not happy with the lighting situation. This looks so much better than, like, any of my other live streams. <laughs> so there we go. So this is nice and smoothed out. It looks really nice right now. Definitely a better shade match for my Casper butt. <laughs> so there we have it. So that's the foundation. And, yeah, like, about two layers for the majority of the face. And next we will go into a concealer and under eye powder. So these are both favorites of mine. One definitely an older favorite than the other. Uh, the first is the um, concealer. This is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind or, or the, May the Instant Age Rewind Eraser. I think they added the, I don't know if the eraser was added, but this is an amazing concealer. It's incredible. I love this specifically for when it's hot. Like if I'm, if I'm in danger of sweating my makeup off, this lasts incredibly. Um, unfortunately, I think I kind of broke the container on this one. Normally it clicks when you twist it, and I never hear the clicks, and I kind of have to guess which way I have to twist it for concealer to come out. There we go. So probably going to get a little bit too much there, but I'm going to add a little bit here. By a little, I mean quite a lot. <laughs> and really bring that out. Because this part right here on my cheek is where I get red and I really wanted to cover that. Um, so I do personally like to bring my concealer out all the way to here. You don't have to do that. I know a lot of people don't and they really only do the dot 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 concealer. I personally just because I know I need extra coverage right at like the tops of my cheeks. I just like bringing my concealer down. So I'm gonna bring that down. And I'm gonna let that sit for like a minute or two um, while we get the loose powder ready. And I lost the lid found the lid. <laughs> and that's going to go into the bag. So while I let this sit for a minute, we are going to take a minute to talk about a loose powder that is way too expensive and has no right being this good for this expensive. Oh, so looking at the chat, Brooke asked, how long does your usual makeup routine take during quarantine? So I think I'm probably one of the only people that uh, during quarantine... In the morning, I like to wake up early and take my time. So back when I was actually going to my office and traveling, I would wake up around five o'clock. I would get up, I would shower. I would spend about an hour on my makeup. I didn't have to spend an hour on my makeup, but that hour was like, I was drinking my coffee. I was watching YouTube. I was taking my time and enjoying that one hour to myself. And I was willing to wake up earlier to have that time. So I would have that and then I would actually take trains and go to work and do the rest of my day. Now in quarantine, I find that I'm actually taking longer to do my makeup because I'm just taking the extra time in the morning. I'm sleeping in now. I sleep in until like 6, 6.30 most days. I wake up, I do my shower, I come out. If I do my hair that morning, I do my hair. Um, and then I take longer. Normally now, on an average work day, since my office is now right there, <laughs> I'm spending about an hour 20 on my makeup. And I'm still doing like a full face just because I, I like the makeup. I have the makeup. So I like spending the time doing what it is that I like to do. And I do get um, called out, not called out, but I do get comments about how I still have like a nice full face of makeup during my 9 a.m. meetings. <laughs> because I've noticed a lot of people during quarantine just didn't do any makeup and have stopped doing that. And if you don't like that and you don't want to do it, more power to you. But for someone like me who... Um, loves makeup. I just, I like having the extra time now to do it. So yeah, so now it used to be about an hour I was doing my makeup for, and now it's like an hour 20-ish every morning. All right, I'm going to blend it out this real quick before it gets too sticky. But I really do, if you are looking for like a uh, coverage, it does help to let your, not foundation, <laughs> to let your concealer sit for, you know, just like a minute or two before you blend it out and I like to bring it over the bridge of my nose because I do get a little red right here and if I have this heavy concealer 
right here and then it stops right here, it can look a little weird. So I do like to kind of just cover that and just bring it out. There. I know some people like to take their concealer and bring it up to their eyes to prime. I do not like to prime my eyes until after I do my eyebrows. So that's going to come a little bit later. Um, but now that this is blended out, I can go to the rest of the questions. Oh, so Victoria is here. Hi, Victoria. Victoria asked, do you know when you'll be going back to the office and how do you feel about that? I miss my office a lot. Um, I actually saw a TikTok the other day, sidebar, about um, like it was some, <laughs> basically someone saying, um, pour one out for all the office plants we left back in March. And I'm like, oh no, there's like four office plants right by my desk and they're probably just all dead. But um, I really do miss the office, but we did get notification that at least from my company, we will be working from home until at least December. So they said the earliest that they would consider going back to offices was December. Uh, quite realistically, we're looking at not not going back to the office until 2021, at least. That's how I see it. So while I miss the office, um, I am grateful that I do have my little office here at my house. And I'm not really going to complain too much, other than the fact that there have been times where I needed the things that I have in my office and I just can't get them right now. So, yeah. Uh, Victoria said, rip to the plants. Yeah, pour one out for the plants, those poor plants. They're all... They didn't deserve that. <laughs> and she said, December, that's great. Your company is great. Thank you. Yeah, I really, really appreciate my company. My company's been doing amazing things, not only just for like COVID, but for um, things surrounding like Black Lives Matter and uh, just diversity and rights and everything. They've been awesome. I really do love my company. So before this gets too sticky, <laughs> I'm going to move to the loose powder. I hate that I like this so much and I'm going to have to buy another one. I know, I know. So this is from Givenchy and this is the Prism Libre Loose Powder. This is the lightest shade. It's got like blue and green and pink shades to it. This was gifted to me through Influencer and it has no right being this good. <laughs> I mentioned before that my previous favorite loose powder was the Natasha Denona loose powder, which was incredible. This is better. This is better than that loose powder. And I love the packaging. It's really cute. It's got a really nice poof poof. I do have to um, mix this a certain way, however, just to make sure that I don't end up with a blue under eye. So what I do is I take out the poof poof and I just kind of tap this a couple of times into the lid. So we get some nice colors here. And what I do is uh, take a flat concealer brush. This is actually from that brush set from Shop Miss A. This is one of the bamboo brushes, and this is a really nice concealer brush. This is actually really good for cut creases because of how nice the brush, the brush bristles are. And I just take this and I just blend all the colors together. Mix them because if I were to go in with a poof poof on my under eyes just from that, I would end up with like pink here, blue here. I did that the first time. It did not look great. But if I mix it all together and get a nice shade, then when I bank my under bank, then when I bake my under eyes, it just looks very nice. It's gorgeous. Uh, Pranika said, if it's safe next year, then the first thing I will do is hit a Bollywood club with my friends or make a trip to India with family. Yo, I feel that. Honestly, like, I was talking to my boyfriend and we were talking about how, like, how much traveling we did last year. Like, last year, I literally traveled so much. I went to Florida. I went to Harry Potter World. I went on a work trip. I went to Washington, D.C., I went to Virginia, uh, and we had plans to do more, and it's just like, <laughs> 2020 is like, nope, you're not doing any of that this year, so I honestly, I cannot wait. I really want to go on a road trip. My boyfriend and I were talking about maybe doing like a cross-country kind of road trip, like rent a car, go to the West Coast, and then fly back, maybe do like a full week, <sighs> but yeah, I, I can't wait. I mean, I know there's no, there really isn't going to be back to normal as we knew it. So I think it's just a matter of figuring out what the hell our new normal is going to be. Because quite honestly, I, I really don't know what the new normal is going to look like for life. It's weird, huh? So I'm just going to bake the under eye like that. And I got a little bit in my eye. That's okay. <laughs> 
And this, I've noticed this powder too. I do like, now that it's summer, I like to bake my T-zone. There have been some other loose powders that I've used that if I bake my T-zone, they look really funky on like my upper lip or my nose. This, like I said, it has no rights looking this good. So I'm just gonna bake here, bake there, and we will clean up the lip line and then get the nose. And I'm gonna just do a little bit on the side here. I like to just move my nose side to side. <laughs> <laughs> to get the sides because these are also problem areas for me and then we'll do quickly right in between my eyebrows there we go and then before I go into the other side you see the um, concealer did uh, crease a little bit just blend that out nice and quickly until it is nice and no longer creasy and then go into the and the powder looks like blue, like it looks super blue, but once it bakes and we brush it away, it's going to look so nice. There we go. So now that we've got the bake done, I'm going to let that sit, but I still have a little bit of powder left in here. I just spilled a little bit, but that's okay. What I like to do is take what's left and use a big fluffy brush to set like my cheeks and my forehead. And this is a brush I've had for a while that I love. And this is from Too Faced. This was the like Mr. Perfect brush. You can see I actually rubbed the name off because I've been using this brush for so much. Um, so I just take a little bit, do tap just a tiny bit off, not into my drink, <laughs> to the rug. I can vacuum the rug and set. And it's so pretty. I do have to make sure if there's anything like still like I make sure I touch it because here I'm going to be blending product out and I do want to make sure that's fully set. So I do want to double check there and we'll um, go back in with another face powder, which might seem excessive, but it, it's not because it's such a lightweight powder. But later on, if it's still not fully set, I'm going to go in with another face powder just to make sure at least here where I'm going to be actively blending product will be fully set. But I like doing this just because I can use up the rest of that powder. And I love the packaging on this. This packaging is like literally the exact same as the Maybelline loose powder packaging. And it's just so nice. Oh. Yeah, like I said, I hate how much I like this powder. And I already have it in my Sephora cart. I'm going to have to buy it. Like, oh. it has no right being this good. So once that's done, I can put the lid back on and then glare at this powder for being so good when it's so expensive. Like, how dare you? Right? How dare you? I'll put this in the bag over here. <sighs> Roxanne said, love, love watching you, Monica. You're so real. Thank you. Oh, I know so many people love um, joining the live streams just because they can also connect with other people in the chat. And I love them too. It's so great. Victoria said, maybe do an Airbnb. I, okay. So I was looking into Airbnbs because before COVID and everything, um, I really wanted to do like a week, maybe a long weekend or a week um, in a cabin in upstate New York. I would have loved to do that. I love cabins. <laughs> I mean, obviously, like, look at my room. It's basically a cabin. But I really want to do a cabin in upstate New York for like a vacation. And I was looking at all of them. A, they're expensive. B, uh, there are a bunch of them are like VRBOs, which are like vacation renter by, by owner. Um, but I was looking at... Uh, <laughs> Airbnbs. I've just heard so many horror stories about Airbnbs. I don't know. I'm probably, I've never used an Airbnb, so it's probably just me like being naive about the whole process. But I've just heard so many bad things about things happening with Airbnbs and people being like stranded and like charges going through and like the customer service not being helpful. So I've always been so anxious about using Airbnb <laughs> just because of that. <sighs> Parnika said, during winter break 2019, I went to Cancun with my family. Even though I had fun, I was a little more jealous of my cousin who went to Harry Potter World. You know what? I was so happy I finally got to Harry Potter World last year. Well, while I talk, I'm going to be um, using my Franken uh, face powder. This is a mixture of the Balm uh, face powder, the um, Sexy Mama trans translucent powder, and the Smashbox face powder. So that's just a mixture there. I'm just going to use it to set the rest of my face. But like I was saying... Uh, so I was so happy I got to go to Harry Potter World last year. And a huge reason why is because when I was in college, so I'm the oldest child in my family, 
Um, and when I went to college or when I went to boarding school and then when I went to college, it seemed like all the rules in my family that I had to follow <laughs> no longer applied to the rest of the kids. It's like once I was gone, the family was just like, yeah, yeah the rest of the kids can do what they want. We don't care. They were not nearly as strict on the rest of the kids as they were on me. But when I was in college, they all went on a vacation. They all went to Harry Potter World. And I didn't find out until I saw pictures online. And I was like, um, excuse me, did you go to Harry Potter World and not take the only kid that likes Harry Potter? Like, yeah, I was in college. I wasn't a kid. But like, excuse you. How rude is that? <laughs> so yeah, I saw pictures. They went to Harry Potter World. Blah, blah, blah. Had fun. Um, <laughs> and I was so upset. But it, it took me a couple years to finally like be able to go. But I'm so glad I went. And actually, I have to say... I'm glad I went on my own. <laughs> it's just a whole new world of freedom when you go on a vacation, either with your friends or on your own. My trip to Harry Potter World is my first time going on a mini vacation by myself. Ooh. I thought it would be awkward, like going to a theme park by myself. I had too much fun. Like on, I could have stayed for like a week. It was great. I, I vlogged a little bit. I got to do exactly what I wanted to do. I got to skip to the front of every line for rides because they have a line for single riders and they have a line for everyone else. I did not have to wait more than 10 minutes for any ride. <laughs> uh -uh. 10 out of 10 would do again. I definitely want to go to Harry Potter. Well, maybe not Harry Potter World considering circumstances, but if I were to go on like a, a trip like that, it would either be with only one other person or by myself because it was a lot of fun. All right, so the rest of my face is set. I'm gonna make sure, yep, that is set over here. We are set over here. This is my Franken blush. I'm gonna talk about it more in my next Pan That Palette update because I really do wanna make a mini blush palette out of my Pan That Palette shades, but it's gonna take a little bit more work. I did order empty makeup pans, so I do have empty pans now that I can use, so I'm pretty excited about that. But for today, we're just gonna use the powder because I have other blushes I really wanna play with. <sighs> Victoria said, we've been looking for one with a pool, but we haven't found one that's available that fits our family size. My only fear of Airbnb is bed, bu ooh, bed bugs. Oh, don't even talk to me about bed bugs. Oh my God. Uh, I don't think of it. I didn't think of everything else you said. Yeah. Oh my God. You're so right. I didn't even think about bed bugs. Oh, I just, I, I get the creepy crawlies just thinking about them. <laughs> Oof. Yikes. All right. Moving away from bed bugs. <laughs> so now that the bake has set under my eyes, it's, it's basically gone. But I'm just going to take this brush from Sigma. This is a, I think it's an F10. I think it's an F10. It's almost rubbed off on here, but it's just a nice little fluffy brush. And I love just using this to rub the bake off from under my eyes. So just very lightly like that. And then for the nose, quick like that. And you see how like it looks blue tinted where the powder still is, but over here, it just looks really smooth and pretty. And then we'll just rub this side off. Anywhere else. Like, look how nice that looks. That is so smooth. It feels really nice. Oh. Like I said, that, that powder is, it's almost insulting how nice it is for that price point. Yeah. Okay, so something I've been doing recently. So this is kind of a technique favorite, more so than an actual product. But what I've been doing, oh, where's my contour brush? There's my contour brush. What I've been doing is I used to typically and always, um, bronze, and then contour. I've been seeing a few tutorials and I've just been trying to do something different just to kind of shake things up. And I've seen um, contouring and then doing bronzer on top of it. And I really like the way that it looks. It looks super pretty. So that's what I've been doing recently and that's what I'm gonna do now. So what I'm going to do is take this Burberry. Uh, this is technically a blush. So they call this a dark earthy blush in number 11. But this is a contour <laughs> for me. It's a, a really pretty shade. It's nice and uh, not too cool toned, but it's really, really nice. And I'm going to take my NARS Eater brush. I feel like this, for as expensive as it was, it's not that great. Like you see it frayed quite a bit. This is a couple years old at this point, but it did fray. It's not the best brush ever. It's too expensive for what it is. Anyway, 
I'm going to use this and just kind of load up my brush. And I'm just going to carve out a little bit down here. Same on the other side. And then personally, let me get this. I need a little bit more product over there. There we go. There we go. I'm going to take this a little bit to like my temple. So you see like right here, I've got the space. I like to go there. And like in a normal summer, I would be bronzing everywhere. I've been trying to keep bronzing down a bit because I'm, I've, I don't think I've ever been this pale in like my life. <laughs> so when I go into the bronzer on top of this, it's gonna, I'm going to try and tone it down a little bit. So what I like to do is once I apply my contour, I like to really make sure everything is blended out. So I'm going to go in with another Sigma brush, and this one is totally rubbed off, but it's their smallest duo fiber brush, and just blend. If you're looking for really good affordable duo fiber brushes, Sigma and ColourPop, amazing and fantastic. And I just like to blend this in and make sure it looks like not just a stripe. Blend, blend, blend. Pranika said, my first time and only time so far was three years ago in January or February 2017 in senior year of high school. Oh, that would have been so cool to go in high school. I remember that I had butterbeer the first day and it was great, but the second day or something, I got to go again and got a cold. Oh, no. Oh, I hope it didn't ruin the rest of your trip. How long were you guys there? Because honestly, okay, so I was in Florida for a week for a work conference. And what I did is I extended my stay at that work conference. We were literally across the street from Universal. Like the hotel where my conference was at was literally across the street from the Universal entrance sign. And so I was like, I have to stay and go to Harry Potter World. So, and that's what I did. So I extended my trip by a day and um, I spent one, it was only one day. Like honestly, thinking back, I could have stayed up to three days. So I kind of wish I had done two days just to really get everything because i really only focus on harry potter world but that was my goal but i didn't even get to do all of harry potter world because i had i was meandering i really want to see all the shows too anyway um so i did the whole park in or not the whole park the whole harry potter park in one day and it was a lot of fun i kind of wish thinking now i would have done two days just to really get everything so moving on i'm going to be doing bronzer and for a really toned down bronzer, especially because I'm this pale, <laughs> hello, um, I've been using this face powder from Milani and I repressed it. So I actually picked this in my next everyday makeup basket, which I think is going up on Friday, if my schedule is correct. But um, this is a face powder in shade number four, uh, which used to be a face powder on me once upon a time. Um, and now it's just really light bronzer. So I repressed it because it had a lot of pan in here. And I just like to take this on this Morphe brush. Now I want to do a disclaimer for the Morphe things. I have had so much trouble with Morphe brushes. Honestly, I've spent so much money on Morphe brushes and most of them are trash. The majority of them are trash. Only a few of them were actually good. And this is one of them. I've had this brush for years and it's actually really good. But that is the exception, not the norm for Morphe brushes. So I'm just gonna take this and blend out my bronzer on top of the contour a little bit and then bring it just a little bit up. But I don't wanna bring it too far up so it doesn't go into the, where eventually I'm gonna put the blush. And so I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and then take it a little bit onto my forehead. Roxanne said, I love your curly hair. People always say how easy it must be to get ready. As a curly hair girl, I'm like, dude, you have no clue how much work it is. So much product, but it really is worth it. So true. Like just like now before I, my hair has kind of been a little bit messy today, but like just now before coming on to live stream, I just threw a little bit of oil in my hair so it didn't look as frizzy. My hair has been frizzing so much because of the summer and because of the storms, because of the humidity. <laughs> it's been a frizz ball. It's actually... It looks kind of ridiculous, but it's been a frizz ball. Um, but yeah, you're right. I've heard people say like, oh, curly hair must be so easy. I have to curl my hair and you must wake up and just be fine. I'm like, oh, well, not really. 
<laughs> there are some days where I just wake up and go, but my hair doesn't look fantastic unless I do a little bit of work to it. <laughs> All right, so like blending that out, you can see it a little bit on camera, but really ultimately it's just a nice subtle like bronze. Let's bring it a little bit down here. I mean, normally, like, if this was a summer where I was going outside and actually tanning, I would bring my bronzer, like, all the way down here and, like, down here. Just do a little bit. Because where am I going? Nowhere. Just a little bit there. Just like that. So much powder. Moving on, I have so much blush here to blush. Oh, Parnika said we were there for a week, went to Universal Hollywood Studios and Disney. Oh, that is a lot. Oh, that sounds awesome. I've never been to Disney World or Disneyland. Um, at HP World, we basically did all the rides except the Dragon Ride. I can't remember the name, but on the map, it showed the ride had loops. So I'm like, nope. I, same. I think that was the, was it the Hedwig ride? I think uh, that's the only one I didn't go on to because even then the, that line was long. And I don't know if that one had a single, it might have had a single rider line. But that was the one where I was like, eh, it's a little too hot outside to be doing that. But like, mm, no. I loved the Hogwarts ride. The Hogwarts ride, I was actually surprised that went like upside down. I didn't think it would. <laughs> so, but I love that ride. I would totally do that one again. That was great. Victoria said, my two oldest have beautiful curly hair and it's not easy at all. Each child needs different hair products. They have different hair needs and to make their hair look the best takes a lot of product. How dare people say it's easy, right? Right, oh, so much. Um, but yeah, you're 100% right. Like half of the struggle of like having curly hair is just learning what the hell it wants and what the hell you have to do to it to make it look decent. Like now I'm actually, so I've been deep conditioning more. My hair looks so much better now than it did like a few weeks ago. If you look at my videos back then, my hair was so stringy. And it's because um, I was in a new season and typically I do have to change up my products for different seasons, but I was just not ready for the summer and being in an attic the entire time. And like, anyway, I had to like relearn how to take care of my um, hair in the uh, summer. So still working on that. But <laughs> anyway, so moving on to blush. I, ha I listed as a favorite just loose blushes because I have been loving loose blushes along with cream blushes. The cream blush I just have here as an example is the Kaja Bento box. I, I love these colors. They're so pretty. Normally for a cream blush, I would put this on right after my foundation. So I'm not going to be wearing this one today, but I have been loving these. And I really want to try out not only more Kaja products, but... Um, more cream blushes in the future. So um, for loose blushes, and a favorite that I've had for a while is this one from Geek Chic Cosmetics. This is a bright pink one, and this is called Let Them Eat Cake, and I'm going to drop it. <laughs> um, but other than that, I've actually just um, received a big order I placed with an indie brand from the UK, and this is called Crow and Pebble, and I got four. <laughs> so I'm going to hold them all up. Four loose blushes. So this one, I love how, like, peachy this one is let's yeah you know why not let's swatch them i can actually open all of these now um but these are all really affordable they were like less than ten dollars usd each and there's so much product let me hold up one of these all of that product and these are all just super pigmented and gorgeous and i'm going to slowly and carefully open all of these and swatch them <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's go. So that's the first bright peachy one. This is the second one. Kind of like a watermelon kind of shape. This is the mauve one. This one looks cool. Look at that one. That mauve shade. That's going to be amazing in the fall. That shade in the fall. And then... We got a nice pinky shade. Look at these shades. These are gorgeous. Gorgeous. And again, each container, all of this loose. I don't want to spill any of it. But look at all that loose blush. Yeah. So without making a mess, let me get a makeup wipe. 
and what the one that I want to use, the one that I've really been liking because I'm trying to go for like a lighter kind of look has been this lightest peachy one, this one right here. Because I really think these are going to make amazing. This is actually a really nice summer color. These are going to make amazing fall colors. So let me just clean up my mess and we're going to go in with that lightest shade. I'm so happy with the order that I got from um, Crow and Pebble. Um, like I said, everything was like pretty affordable and uh, for international shipping, I actually, I only had to spend $35 and then I got free shipping from the UK <laughs> with this company. And again, it's like a tiny little indie brand and the packaging is adorable. The only complaint I had is that in order to keep them safe for international travel, they had to tape them up. And so it took me like, you know, 35 ish minutes to like scrape the tape off of all of these. But, like, they did arrive in one piece, so I can't complain about how they were packaged, because it worked. Alright, this blush all over my desk. <laughs> there we go. Alright, so I also noticed that for loose blushes, uh, you have to use a different brush, which seems a bit, uh, probably obvious, looking in hindsight. But, um using my favorite blush brush. I noticed that these blushes came out fairly um, like splotchy when I knew the formula wasn't splotchy because I had tried it before. So this is the Real Techniques 400 brush, which is an amazing blush brush, brush <laughs> for um, pan blushes. For loose blushes, this is not what you're going to be looking for. It's, it's not really going to work that well for you. For loose blushes, this is the kind of brush. A nice, dense, sturdy brush is what I've been using and what I've been loving. Let's jump back into the chat. I saw that. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, so the the ride was called the Tri Wizard, the Dragon Challenge. Yeah, I think that was closed by the time I got there. Victoria said, have you tried Miel? I loved that brand for the boys. No, I have not. I think I've heard of that brand, but I've never tried anything from it. I have to look into that. And Roxanne said, yeah, how dare them. Ooh. All right, so I'm just going to rub off a bit on a bit. A bit on my towel just to kind of get this is just stained a little bit from the blush I used yesterday. Um and I'm going to take just a tiny little bit of this loose blush and tap it off into the cap because this literally you don't need that much product when it comes to a loose blush. And for me, I want to go a little blush heavy since this is a lighter shade. And I like to take this, and I like to tap it in. I don't like to, like, blend it in like a pressed blush. So I like to... And I like to take it high, like up here. Like that. And load up the brush one more time. And just a little bit more, because I feel like I can go a little more right there. There we go. There we go. You see blush, no blush. It's so pretty. I'm gonna load it up for the other side. And it's, uh, the only downside is that it's really easy to get too much product. So just go slow and really load up your blush brush and build it up as you go. Because you could also like go in way too heavy with this. There we go. So a little heavy on the blush, but I like this. <laughs> Take a little bit up here, a little bit on the chin, and done. And just like I went through and blended with the contour, I like to blend out everything else with a bigger duo fiber brush. So I'm going to go in and just blend this together. There we go. I've still got blush everywhere. <laughs> Thought I was being neater than that. So now, the last, I guess, base, well, before eyeshadow, or before eyebrows, excuse me, the last base is going to be a highlighter. So let me find where the heck I put my highlighter. <laughs> Let's 
it is so tough keeping everything so organized. <laughs> All right, so highlighter I've been using is this one from Becca. This is the Royal Glow Highlight, and this is in my HP Project Pan. And then this brush I've really been loving, and this is from the AOA Studio line, and this is from a different line than the Bamboo one. This is an individual brush that I picked up, so it was more than a dollar, but I liked this one. And this is the F19 brush. So I'm just going to take this highlight. I really like doing this one on my Cupid's bow right here. And then a little bit on the tip of the nose, though it is a little too dark for me. So sometimes the tip of the nose looks a little strange, but I like highlighting my nose. And then on the cheeks. This brush, I have to say, is so much nicer than the other highlighter I was using, which was the ABH brush, which shed like nobody's business. That blush, that blush, that highlighter brush shed so much. It was ridiculous. And this one is just so soft and nice, and it doesn't really shed. Like, I don't see any shed hairs here. I've washed this quite a few times. No shedding. And there we go. And of course, like everything else, I like a nice blend. We're going to go to do a fiber brush and blend this in. Uh, Roxanne said blush on point. Oh, thank you. I've actually noticed that I've been doing um, heavier blush ever since I got into quarantine because like you guys, uh, I'll, I might take a picture of my face and post it um, on the community tab, tab once I'm done because I do like because of the studio lighting that I have here, I have two umbrella lights and a ring light. I am still a bit washed out. Um, so like looking in my mirror right here, uh, my blush is a lot heavier <laughs> than you probably can see here, even though I do have a nicer webcam up now, but I've actually been really liking a heavier blush look like lesser on the contour and the bronzer and just heavier on the, the blush. I just noticed it's really pretty. There we go. So that's about it for the normal base. What I'm going to do now is grab my eyeshadow brushes because what I need, next need to do are my eyebrows. And I'm going to try and do those pretty quickly <laughs> just because I know they're not really the most interesting part of anyone's makeup routine. Uh, what I've been doing for eyebrows, just really quick, I love using this cream shadow from Maybelline. Um, and this is just the uh, color tattoo in the shade Risk Maker, which is the black cream shadow. And then I go over that with a black eyeshadow. So I'm going to try and do this as quickly as I can. Let's see. I'm going to do it in my big mirror. I need to make sure they match. I don't look like a crazy person. Do, do, do. All right. Let's see how fast I can do this. So I'm using this ABH brush because I still think this is a really great double-sided brush from ABH. Load it up. And I like to start from the bottom of the brow. Bring it up, flick it out, and then just follow the brow. Ooh, it went a little high. Ooh, the brow is a little strong on that side. Ooh, I went a little too high there, but that's okay. <laughs> it's hard to focus on brows. And we'll just outline this side, same way, underneath, flick it out, go above. Let's see, I gotta find it a little bit up to match the other side. Ooh, they don't match, but that's okay. They're sisters, not twins. There we go. And then I just fill them in. I don't know, honestly, I don't know if it's just because I've always lived with bushy eyebrows, but I've never wanted to do like those really pristine individual brow hair Instagram brows. I can't. I just like filling them in because I've dealt with my bushy brows forever and I think they look fine. <laughs> uh, Parnika said, do you read HP fanfic? I love them on the Marauders era the most. I may or may not go off about something I saw on Ben Barnes's Instagram story. Um, I read fanfic, honestly, 
uh, back when I was a teenager, a lot of fanfic. So much fanfic. Um, I wasn't too into the Marauders. I was really into, um, I don't know, what was popular back then? I feel like it was a lot of uh, dreary mm -hmm. <laughs> fanfic. There was a lot of time travel back to when uh, Tom Riddle was in school, which was interesting and also kind of weird. But I read a lot of fan fiction. Actually, the most fan fiction I read was anime. Not particularly Harry Potter, but I still read a lot of Harry Potter fanfic. And Alfol, A-L-F-O-L, -L, I don't know how to pronounce that correctly, said hi. Hello. Nice to have you. Oh, you see, I just went a little too bro. A little too crazy on this brow, but that's okay. <laughs> And there we go. For the brow gel, I honestly, I really don't like this brow gel, but I just want to finish it up. This is the ABH Tinted Brow Gel, and it's a brown. They don't make a black one, which is annoying. That's something I don't like in, like, brow products where, like, I had to go and I dropped it. But, like, something I don't like in brow products is, like, if you don't make a, a dark black color. Like, so many people have black hair and black eyebrows. Why won't you make a black brow gel or something. I really don't know why there's so many brands that have brow gels and tinted brow products, but they never make a black shade. That's a hair. So that's why for me, I really like using black eyeshadow and black cream shadow because they're affordable and they're actually black. <laughs> there we go. <sighs> So now, this is the part where I like to go into the setting spray because my base is basically done. Next, I'll be moving on to my eyes and I'll be using an eye primer, making sure that's all set, and then going with eyeshadow. But before I do that, I like to use a setting spray. So let me grab my setting spray. Boop. Boop. So I like using two because it's high maintenance and I've got setting sprays. The first one is this Wet n Wild Photo Focus Rose, which you can, you can use it as a primer or as a setting spray. But I love the nozzle on this. It's so nice. <laughs> I've got fans going on, so it just went right into my face. But it's such a nice nozzle, and I love the packaging. And I love how affordable this is from Wet Wild. So. And a fan. I missed a little spot down here, so I'm going to do... I like to make sure my face is, like fully wet. I'm not going to talk too much so I don't trace it, but I like to make sure my face is actually wet enough so that the powders meld together. I don't want it to just be a dusting of like powder, not powder, of spray. I want it to actually like sink through the layers of makeup I just put on and dry down into a nice finish. And then once this one is mostly dry, I go in with my second one, which is this Cover FX Illuminating Setting Spray. And this one's almost empty. I've had this for so long. I'm just trying to finish this up at this point. So shake it up and normally I wouldn't go so ham on such an illuminating setting spray if I was like going to leave the house because it's very glowy. But since I'm home, this is mainly for like camera, I, I would use that much. And the only uh, thing you want to make sure you do, and which is why I wait to this point, is that you want to make sure you're actually like fully set and dry before you touch your face again or do anything else. Just so that you don't move things around. <laughs> you can also, I also hit myself in the face like that constantly when doing this. But you can also use a fan, and I've got my little fan over here, so I think I might just grab this. There we go. <laughs> What's the highest setting? There we go. Making sure it's all drying up. I want to get one of those cute little hand ones, like the dryers from Amazon that I see like Taylor Wynn use. This works just as well. Thank you. 
using what you got. All right. And now that that is done, I'm going to go in with eye primer. I think the only spot left is like right here. That's a little bit wet. But can you see like the difference it made in that everything just looks much more cohesive and put together? I'll also use this time to clean up my lip line. Let's shake just a little Q-tip and a little mirror. And, and go like this. Honestly, if I was going to go in with like a nice thick liquid lipstick, I would probably leave most of the top lip the way that it is so I have a nice primer for it. But I've not been wearing lipstick like at all <laughs> since quarantine. So uh, let's just clean it up. There we go, we have a lip line again. Perfect. So, for a prime, let me put my setting sprays away. Boop. Okay, so Pranika, I'm about to. Um, expose myself here. Who is Ben Barnes? The name sounds familiar, but I honestly, I don't know who that is. <laughs> I need to find out who that is. Because <laughs> Pranika said, now I cannot see what people have been saying for so long. I've accepted it since reading Marauder's era fanfic, but now it's locked and sealed as he's the head canon of Teenage Serious Black. I don't know who that is. Am I old? <laughs> I need to find out who that is. <laughs> And Alphal said, I love how you just put a fan to your face. You know what? You got to be creative. <laughs> Use what you got. That's probably like the main reason why I didn't, haven't actually bought that fan off of Amazon, the handheld fan off of Amazon yet, because I can just do that. <laughs> just put that fan to my face. It's probably like more effective too. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, for eye primer, finally moving on. Um, I did get an eye primer from Crow and Pebble. It's called there, what is it actually? The blank page. Um, and so it's like a, a beige. And I've noticed that with this, normally for eye primer, I like to apply it with a concealer brush and then go in with powder to set it. Cause I do set my primer. I know not, not everyone does that, but I noticed that with my hooded eyes and with my eye, just with how it works, um, it just, this works so much better when I set my eye primer because if I don't, nightmares happen. But I did notice that if I apply this with a concealer brush, it looks terrible. You need to actually warm it up with your hand. So what I've noticed is that just using a finger and putting just a little bit like this, make it a mirror. And applying it pretty thinly. Like think of this, because I at first I tried to treat this like a MAC paint pot. This is not a MAC paint pot. This is a thinner formula that works really well when you thin it out. Think less MAC paint pot and more Milani eye primer is what this is. And I like to just bring this up just like this, like a nice thin layer. You can tell there's a difference, but it's not a thick, thick layer. And then as soon as that is there, I like to take my sponge, just even it out. I want a nice, nice base, and then face powder. I take my face powder, and I just lightly set my eyelid. And there we go. Eye is set and ready to go. And I try not to do like I said, not thick layers, make it really thin um, and really spread it out. Because um, if you go in with a thick layer of at least this primer, it it doesn't work. It looks weird and it makes your eyeshadow look all splotchy. So blend, bring it out. 
Need a little bit more for at least down here. Ready, sponge. And this seems like a lot of steps. Like I understand that this isn't a quick five minute makeup thing. This is what I like to do when I've got time. And I always make sure like I've got time in the morning because I'm like doing my makeup. This is like my happy time. Normally when I'm doing this in the morning, oh, I just got powder there. But when I'm doing this in the morning, I'm like listening to music or watching YouTube or having my coffee. And I'm just gonna set this quick, quick, quick. And then what if I do just what I did right there, I just go in with a spoolie and run it through my brows one more time to make sure that I don't make too much of a mess. Dude. So just one last quick run through with my nice Sigma brush. I just like to do this just to make sure there's no extra powder left to mess with the eyeshadow. And then I take a spoolie. This is just a MAC spoolie. And run it through the brows just to get rid of any excess powder. And then normally by now the brow gel that I've used has like hardened, which I like having crisp, what is it, like crispy, crunchy brows. I like it just because my brow hairs are unruly and thick, so they need to be held down in line. They need to be disciplined. <laughs> so then, yeah, just brush them through and then we're good for now. This eyebrow looks so intense. Like this eyebrow is like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Alrighty. So this is the base. Base is done. Moving on to eyeshadow. I actually don't have a plan for eyeshadow. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet. We shall see. Alright. Parnika said he played Prince Caspian in Chronicles of Narnia. Okay. I know what you're talking about now. Um, I haven't watched it, but was Dorian Gray in the movie Dorian Gray? Oh, okay. Was he the, he was the main character? Oh, okay. I know who he is now. Thank you. Uh, and that makes a lot of sense. It does. Erin said, hey, Queen, just found you through your black lipstick video an hour ago. Love your energy. Thank you. I've noticed recently I see trends where like the black lipstick videos just like trend for a while and everyone watches them and I get a pretty good amount of subscribers from them. I love the black lipstick videos. Speaking of the black lipstick videos, I just got this lipstick in. This is the uh, Fenty Matte Moselle in the navy black shade. I have not used it yet. It is brand new. Just got it. These are on clearance. So someone said they might be discontinued, which is sad. I have the green one, which I think is called wasabi, and then this one, the black one. So I'm excited to do another one of those videos, but it's gonna take me a while. It'll definitely be before Halloween, but I still have to find a couple of other black lipsticks to do that video with. Lori said, your base always looks so flawless. Thank you. I really do like, just like I've got my routine down. Like I could probably do my routine with my eyes closed now, but I just, I love having a good, nice base. Like if I had to choose between doing the base and then doing my eyeshadow, like I could go outside like this if I just threw a quick shadow on my lid and then mascara, like I'd be good to go, which I actually did that yesterday. <laughs> um, moving things over so I can feel my fan. It's getting hot in here. But yeah, so we're good there. So let me, I was gonna grab an eyeshadow palette. Hmm, let me ask you guys. So question, do you guys wanna see the look I've been doing and loving with my green brown palette? So it'll be a green look mainly with these two shades right here. Or, 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 hmm. I could do a purple look that I've been doing. Trying to use up my Panda palette. Let me grab it. And that look would mainly be like these shades right here. And then maybe a different shimmery on the lid. So what do you guys wanna see? Should we do green or should we do purple? I was thinking of bringing in this Alyssa, Alyssa Edwards palette, but I really, I look at this and I don't know exactly what I would want to do from this either. So yeah, shall we do green or shall we do purple? I'm leaning, I'm leaning towards the green. I see a few people are like green. I'm leaning towards the green. 
and I really do love this look. And I haven't done it, I haven't done it on camera yet. Yeah, let's let's do the green. Thank you for voting. I've actually noticed. So something I've noticed. Um, someone commented and asked uh, if I was an olive undertone because of how I looked without makeup on. And uh, I've noticed, I watched the video um, from, I forgot what the influencer's name was, but it was so well spoken and um, informative. And I think I might be an olive undertone. It would explain why when I'm tanner, um, people say that I'm a warm undertone, but now that I'm lighter, I had someone at Mac tell me you're a cool undertone. And most of my veins are like green. <laughs> like, and the fact that green looks really good on me, um, I'm thinking I might be olive undertone. I don't know, like 100%, because I'm still not like an expert in anything, but it would make a lot of sense if I was an, like a really light olive undertone. I think it would make a lot of sense. And did I just spill Coke on my face? I did. Dab. There you go. I actually had people ask me that before. How do you um, like wipe your face off if you spill anything and you've got makeup on? Dab it and then just let it dry. Same with sweat. <laughs> you just dab it and let it dry. All right. So for the green look, let me get my brushes at the ready. <sighs> we're going to need this one. We're going to need this one. All right, so I am first going to go in with this lighter shimmer shade that I've already hit pan in right down here. And let me see, should I use the mirror in here? I probably should, huh? All right, so I'm gonna use this brush. And unfortunately, I do have a couple of Morphe brushes in here. Again, take this with a grain of salt because I've tried so many Morphe brushes. I spent so much money on Morphe brushes. And out of the over $100 I've spent on Morphe brushes, I think I've gotten like 10 good brushes out of dozens that I've tried. So they're not really good. So take this with a grain of salt. Only I really only recommend the ones that I mentioned specifically. Um, like this is the M573. And this is, oh, I've got two of them. Like, see, this is the difference between two of the same brush. Like they don't look the same after using them for a while, do they? Can I zoom in and make it like, okay, so these are the same brush, theoretically. They don't really look the same or act the same, but they are. This one's a lot better. See, that's the thing, They're, this is so inconsistent. I'm trying to put it in front of the, the wood so you can see them, but Morphe is so inconsistent that the brushes are not the same when they're the same brush. <laughs> so it's kind of the luck of the draw. Really, which is why I can't really super recommend Morphe brushes. I really like Sigma. Sigma has great brushes. And then Shop Miss A, I've got a few from Shop Miss A that I really, really like. Um, but that's my main thing, Sigma, Shop Miss A. But I'm gonna use a couple of Morphe brushes because they're kind of my recent-ish go-tos. This one is a Sigma, yeah. I mean, these have all been, do you know how all these are like stained? pink. They're all permanently stained pink because of my Pan That palette, the Jeffree Star Blood Sugar palette. <laughs> it stained so many of my brushes. I just cleaned these brushes. Half of them are pink <laughs> because of the Blood Sugar palette. Anyway, enough ranting. We are going to go in with that first Morphe brush in that lighter green shade. And let me get just a smaller mirror to work with. And I'm going to use, this as my transition, and this is a shimmer shade. And I've noticed that particularly of this look. I love this green shimmer as a transition. And I like going in um, in thin layers with this because you can get a lot of fallout from these shades. So I try to go in and just build it up without doing too much at once. Pranika said, wet and wild brushes in both brush lines are far better than Morphe, I would say, even though I've never used Morphe brushes. I would have to agree with some, I feel like Elf is also hit or miss, but they are definitely better than Morphe. I would have to say, overall, 
wet and wild brushes are also really good and cheaper than Morphe. Especially if you can get their holiday sets. Like I think every Christmas time, they come out with a nice big set of brushes. They're really good. And also once this is like processed and up on the channel, I did a video comparing a bunch of affordable brush sets. And I will link that video um, in the cards once this is done processing. Because I compared an e.l.f. brush set, I think a BH Cosmetics brush set, and a Wet n Wild brush set. So I will make sure that is there. And if you want to catch it before then, just, um, I think I call it like the Affordable Brush Showdown. Or just look, go to my channel and search Affordable Brushes and you'll find the video. It was from a few months ago, if not last year. So there, like that. So I want that to be my transition. Same for the other side. You notice for me, my transition goes all the way up. Because another fun thing about having hooded lids is like trying to learn how to actually do eyeshadow on them. When the majority of the big influencers, well now we have some influencers that have hooded eyes, but I remember when I first started watching YouTube, there weren't really anyone with hooded eyes that I could look up to, and so trying to like, when they say put it in your crease, and I'm like, okay, so like, where? You mean this thing that disappears? Like right there? Like that's <laughs> there? You want me to put it there? So I always have to like use my transition and my crease shade above my crease and like make my own crease. Um, and trying to still work on my cut creases and my half cut creases and my halo eyes. It's all about learning and practicing. And that's something I've noticed a lot. The more I practice, the more I do it, the better I get. And I like to take this all, almost all the way up to the, the brow. Because this is going to be like the majority of the look. Because this look that I've really been liking, it's like really only three shades max. So now that we have this transition done, we don't have any fallout next or yet. We are going to get some fallout with the next shade. So I hope it doesn't stain. I might. Well, I've only got that other loose powder. Mm, no, I'm not going anywhere. We're going to do it. So I'm going to, I was going to say, if you're, getting ready to go out somewhere. And if you're gonna go into the shade that you know has fallout, um, pack some loose powder underneath your eye to make sure it doesn't stain. Because I have noticed with these shades, if I try to brush away the fallout, sometimes it stains. I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna wash this off right when I'm done because I'm gonna go to bed because I'm old. <laughs> but um, you can definitely do that. And I'm gonna take the next darkest shade. So this shade, right there. And I'm going to use this to go into my quote-unquote crease and in my outer V. So I'm going to take this. Like this. And this is where you want to have a little bit of patience when building it up. Just so you can try to avoid that fallout and this I'm gonna take up here just a little bit in I don't want to go too far in but I want to create dimension especially because these are both shimmer shades these are both shimmer shades so creating a bit of dimension right there is going to help and I'm gonna bring this in because I do want to grab one other shade that is going to be our anchor point out here. So this is going to be the, the last shade. So just doing that same on the other side. Focusing there. Bring it in. in. And this, for this look in particular, I don't know if you've seen my previous videos where I did the card trick where I would hold a card up and do that kind of shape. I've noticed that with this look in particular, the nice round shape looks nicer for this, for these shades and for this look. Um, I noticed that like with darker, like with deep, maybe like purples and reds, the nice wing looks nice. But like for this kind of look, I think that the roundness accentuates it and it looks really nice. So I've always preferred to keep it round on the edge right here than to make it like sharp, just at least for this look. 
So I'm going to take my duo fiber brush real quick because I did get just a little bit of fallout over here. So brush, 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 brush. And I was, okay, so I do this in between brushes because I've noticed that sometimes I accidentally like brush off one side of fallout. And then if I don't like do a quick little brush brush here, I'll put that fallout right here, <laughs> which is not great, especially if it stains. So I like to just brush it off a little bit on my hand make sure I'm really just brushing the fallout away and I'm not just moving it around my face. There we go. So the darkest shade that I'm going to use is this one. This is a loose shadow from Geek Chic Cosmetics. This is in my HP Project Pan and this is called Evil Lurks and this is a dark I call this a matte shade with some glitter in it because that's basically what it is. Let me tap out just a tiny bit for you to see. Let me see. Can this focus? There we go. Nope. Okay, kind of. So it's a basically, it's a matte shade that has shimmer in it, but it's a really dark, almost black green shade. So this is perfect for deepening up um, dark green looks like this. So I'm gonna take the same Actually, I'm going to take this. Yeah, we'll use this one. So this is the Morphe M433. And I'm going to dip this in that shade and kick off the rest of the excess. Now, this leaves me with mainly just the matte shade on my brush. And I'm going to take this. And this in particular, I'm only going to focus like right here. Because I want to create some extra dimension. Just and make it a little bit smoky right there. Do a little bit more. And you can see the difference from here to that side. Like this, it looks a bit more cohesive here. And a bit more smoky. I got some fallout there, so we're gonna clean that up. But this side, it just looks like this. We've got a nice shape to it. That's exactly what I'm looking for in this kind of look. So brush. And then there we go. I'm gonna smoke off the lower lash line, but I want to do the other side first. So let me tap out a little bit more of this shade. Tap it in. Same for the other side. See, doesn't that look so nice? So you can see, even though we've got a lot of shimmer going on, we still have that same dimension we would like to see. And this looks so nice. Ah, I love that. Okay. I think we're just about done up there. So now for this look, I'm going to keep this... Oh, I just spilled a little bit of it. We're going to keep this loose shade here because what I like to do for smoking out the lower lash line, I like to go in with the deepest shade first and then blend it out with the lightest shade. But before we do that, I wanna go in with my lid shade. And for my lid for this look, I really like this shimmer right here. And I like, for something like this where I don't need it to be super long lasting or bright, I like applying it with my finger. So I'm going to just take that shimmer shade on my finger and just mush it in there. Because I really don't want this to be super precise. I want this to be blown out. We're going to blend it out a little bit more. But for this kind of smoky look, I don't want it to be like a super precise cut crease. Like that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And this, I am going to get follow from this. So. And I like to say, if you see, I actually drag my finger across my lid, that helps to like really make sure it actually sticks without using any um, like glitter glue or anything. If you just really press it into your lid, that helps. And then tap it out. 
So now that we have that applied, look how nice the colors look together. So now that it's applied, I'm going to take the sh the brush we were just using. I don't want to add any new product to it. I might even do a little color switch with it. Um, I'm just going to blend out the edges of the shimmer shade with the rest of the shades just to make sure it looks as blown out as I want it to be. Like that. You see, so there really isn't too much of a like a sharp progression, but we just have like a flow from lid to green to green to green. <laughs> like that. And now I'm going to do another quick. See, these duo fiber brushes, I use them so often. They're great. So now for the lower lash line. I am going to take this flat liner brush and dip it into the darkest shade that we use, that loose, that loose um, shadow from Geek Chic. And I'm gonna press that onto my lower lash line on both sides. Mainly just until like halfway in. And don't worry if it doesn't look the best because this is gonna be blent out to oblivion. Blent out, blend it out. Same for the other side. And for a shade this dark, I think stamping it in like this and then blending it out is a great way to maintain control of where the shade goes. Because if you if you went in just with a fluffy brush and just blended it out, you would have super rad raccoon eyes, like right away. But if you do it like this, the color stays kind of, for the most part, where you put it. And then when I go in with this brush, this is a Morphe M506, a really small, just little blendy brush. When I go in with that, and I do no product on this at all, I just go in and I blend. It's gonna mainly stay close to my lash line, but it's gonna diffuse. So let me blend this one out. Good, there. So you see how this one's mostly, I need to blend a little bit more right there. <laughs> but do you see? how this side looks nice and blended out, but it's still staying close to my lash line from that. There we go. There we go. So the first shade is blended out. Then I like to color switch this brush and go in with the lightest, the first shade we use. So like this shade right there, I'll go in with that on the same tiny brush. And then to even further blend out, because we really want this nice and smoky, that bottom lash line. And I do this with just about every look. If it's a light, bright, dark look, I just like to use this method of blending out the lower lash line because it really can help really bring together an entire look. See, so you're just adding that other shade and really ties the whole eye together. There. So that's about the full eye look before I go in with mascara. So I'm just brushing away a little bit of what's down there. So it's a nice smoky look, but it looks so pretty. I love this look so much. I never thought I would like such a shimmer heavy look because really the only matte we used was this. This isn't even a real matte. I made it a matte, but this is still a shimmer shadow. So I never thought I would like such a shimmer heavy eye look before, but it's so pretty. I love this look so much. So I am going to clean up a little bit and then we will go in with some mascara and then i don't i don't know if i want to do lipstick to be quite honest i kind of want to try that new black lipstick but i have not been using lipsticks like at all so because my actually i added to my favorites list one of my favorites this month or for the last few months it's just been chapstick because that's what i've been using chapstick <laughs> da -da. i need more lotion because my hands are so dry 
I actually, so I have these too. Hmm. Put that away. It helps if you clean as you go when you do makeup. I can make such a mess when I'm doing my makeup. It's kind of crazy how ridiculous it can get in like just a short amount of time with just a little bit of makeup. Alrighty. So, mascara. I love the Lash Princess mascara. This is the volume boosting one. Let me grab my mirror. This um, look also looks really nice with falsies, but I don't know if you guys want to watch me for 15 minutes attempting to put on false lashes. So we're just gonna do mascara. And there we have it. That's basically the whole look using most of my recent favorites. Something something I would do for lip color. I have this little sample card of Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. And there's a, quite a few in here. Don't think I want to do anything red. Let's do one of these neutral ones. There's, hey, we've got Kim KW. So I'm just gonna lift that as a sample. Let's see, let's use a concealer brush. Let's use this one. Let's see how this looks. Oh, it's pretty dry. Oh, it's a nice, like, peachy nude shade. Which I do think, for a look this bold, I would go with a nice neutral lip. Though this lipstick is really dry. I think this is one of her, like, matte lipsticks. But I'm going to put a little effort. I'm going to try and put on a lipstick today. <laughs> huh, so it's just a little bit lighter than, like, my natural lip color. I don't know. I think it's a little light for me. Maybe not with this look. It looks kind of like concealer lip, doesn't it? <laughs> well, we tried it. And I do want to try each one of these little samples because I don't think I'm ever going to buy a Charlotte Tilbury lipstick. They're a little bit too expensive for me and for what they are. But we have it here finally. Today's final look. Uh, let's see. Uh, Pranika said, the last time I wore eyeshadow with contacts was New Year's Eve. And the last time was first week of July. I wore a simple eyeshadow look with my base routine, but with my glasses for my birthday. Yeah, I know a lot of people. Um, unless they're, like, particularly, like, really wanting to wear makeup and just have fun with it. A lot of people aren't wearing makeup. And I'm not going to um, shame anyone for doing that at all. I love makeup and wearing it every day, so that's what I'm going to do. But I know there's a lot of people. Of course, there's a lot of things happening right now. And uh, I just, this is like my, my self-care, my me time. I, I like it, but I know for a lot of people, it's not that. So I can definitely see that. Oh, Gabrielle said, oh, no, I made it to the tail end. I missed so much. Oh, it's okay, Gabrielle. You can, uh, you, you guys made it. And I have a little bit left because I do have to go through the rest of my favorites. I did um, put together a list of um, like movies and TV shows and kind of stuff that I do want to go through kind of real quick and just talk about favorites and what I've been doing like entertainment wise recently. So you didn't miss the whole thing. 
Uh, oh, Belle is here. Hi, Belle. She said, I'm late too. I'm glad I'm catching some of it. I'm glad to have you guys here. Honestly, uh, I love these live streams. I love talking to you guys. And uh, I have a lot of fun here. Belle said, I love makeup as a grounding practice. It's very meditative. I 100% agree. To me, it's just so zen to just take the time. You've got like your routine. You've got the steps. You can focus on one step at a time. And yeah, yeah, that's a perfect way of putting it. It's grounding. It's lovely. So let me pull up. Let me see. Where's my phone? I had, I actually put together a list do, 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 of the favorites I wanted to talk about. So I believe it was Parnika who actually left me the comment asking me to um, talk about uh, like like TV shows and uh, movies that make me feel nostalgic um, and uh, like they bring me back to like a nice little happy place. So let me pull up my little list because I had it all there. Okay, so. Uh, for favorite TV shows and movies, I'm going to talk about, like, some of these are, like, recent favorites, but the majority of these, these are, like, all-time favorites, and they make me feel a bit nostalgic. Uh, the first category are just all Ghibli movies, particularly Kiki's Delivery Service and Howl's Moving Castle. Uh, I watched Kiki's Delivery Service on repeat as a child, <laughs> to the point where we pretty much wore down the VHS tape that it was on. I love that. And I just realized recently that I have access to HBO Max, which is the new HBO streaming service, and it has all the Ghibli movies on it. I will be re-watching those. They are so calming and lovely. If you just need to like get away for an hour and a half, they are incredible. So those Ghibli movies, I love them. Next, some random movies that I love. Well, first, the Star Wars prequels. So episodes one, two, and three. I the I grew up with these, so like I, I watched all of those in theaters as they came out as a child when I was seven or eight years old. I dressed up as Padme Amidala, uh, um, for Halloween several years, <laughs> and I just I really loved the prequels, and I like I got made fun of because back then, you know, back when the prequels were the bad movies, I got made fun of for liking the prequels. <laughs> Until now, we have the new movies, and unfortunately, they're they're really not great. I wanted to. I wanted the new trilogy to work out well. The first movie, episode, what, seven, was pretty good. But what the hell happened with the next two? Oh, okay. So, unfortunately, they kind of went downhill. But the great thing about that is that now everyone is going back and remembering how great the prequels actually were. I'm seeing some great tier, like, amazing memes about the prequels now. <laughs> And I've always loved the prequels, so um, those have a special place in my heart because not only do like I grow up with them, but um, I just I, I I love them so much. <laughs> so all the Star Wars prequels. Um, another movie that makes me nostalgic is Miss Congeniality. I freaking love that movie. We actually uh, I did a collab with my friend Christina Chang, specifically on Miss Congeniality Day, which was I believe April twenty sixth. Yeah, April twenty fifth. I think it was twenty fifth. <laughs> I love that movie so much. I watched it uh, when I was probably too young to watch it, but it's one of my favorite movies. And whenever I watch it, I'm reminded of the like the young girl that I was that looked up so much to Gracie. I just, I love that movie so much. So those are the main like movies. <sighs> Talking specifically about TV shows, I had to dig in because when I was a teenager, I was a weeb, <laughs> still am, but I loved anime. So anime that made me really think about like my teenage years, like late middle school, high school, uh, Death Note. I actually have, uh, let's see, which, which way is it this way? It's this way. That is the entire Death Note manga right here. And then this big brick right there is the entire Death Note manga in one volume. So we've got all of that there. And I've got a couple other random manga. Some I got from Japan when I went there. I think those are the ones I got in Japan, those black ones right over there. So I really liked anime and manga. So what made me feel nostalgic were um, Death Note, Code Geass. I watched for the first time when I was 15. That had a really profound effect on me. I loved Code Geass. Uh, Kamikaze Kato Jean. 
was the first anime I ever watched <laughs> when I was like 13. And uh, well, the first anime I watched knowing it was an anime. Like I watched Sailor Moon as a kid, but I didn't know it was an anime, you know. Um, and then Skip Beat. I, I loved Skip Beat, even though it had like only one season of the anime. The manga was a bit better, but I really liked that. It was a really cute um, anime show. Um, Belle said, have you seen Mushishi? I freaking love Mushishi. My boyfriend, uh, back when we first got together, he was like, I think you would like this show. You should watch it. That is, I actually, I got, um, I, I love ASMR. I got so much ASMR from Mushishi. It is such a good show. Just like, it is calming. It is meditative. It is transcendent. I freaking love that anime. It is, I love that. I'm so glad more people like it. It's such a good show. That one, I need to add that to my list for these favorites because that is such a good one. Uh, and I think I saw that for the first time, I'm thinking 2017, that's a good show. And that that has such great rewatch value in Mushishi. Uh, let's see. So that those are the main anime that like make me feel a bit nostalgic. Um, it's on Hulu. I think, okay. So I think my boyfriend has a Crunchyroll account. So we watched most of our um, anime through Crunchyroll. I didn't know it was on Hulu. I'll have to check out Hulu. I don't know if I have a Hulu like paid subscription. I have to check on that. Gabrielle said, Death Note was so creepy, but so good. It makes you think about the value of life. I agree. I was way too into Death Note. Like I read a lot of Death Note fan fiction and I was really into it as a teenager. I think that was like the main show I loved as a teenager was Death Note. And I might be aging myself here. But I got into the manga first, and I watched as the anime premiered in Japanese. I was like in eighth or ninth grade when the anime actually came out for the first time. So that's when, um, so that's when I first got into it. And then we watched the dub as the dub came out on Adult Swim. <laughs> Made fun of the dub mainly because it was it was like meh, you know. So yeah. <laughs> Gabrielle said, "Orin High School Host Club was one of my faves as a teen." <laughs> uh huh. No, you're not lame. My stepsisters. My stepsisters, who aren't really super into anime, they loved Orin High School Host Club. So we watched that one together. That was, it was kind of like the gateway anime. Like if you got into Orin, you could get into like other things too, you know? So that was for, um, so anime. But then I, there was also a few American cartoons that I loved. I loved um, Daria. There's an, actually, there's a spinoff coming out soon um, from Daria. But I loved Daria, and I didn't watch the whole show, like, beginning to end. I watched just whatever episodes were on the end. Did anyone watch the end? It was, like, the teenage version of Nickelodeon. <laughs> I watched basically anything on that channel. But um, Daria was on. O'Grady was another animated show that was kind of weird. It was like Daria. It was a weird kind of animated show that I watched as a teenager. Um, and then for non-animated shows, that just made me think of nostalgia, um, Degrassi, The Next Generation. I watched that on The End. Basically anything that had reruns on The End. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Trading Spaces, uh, Degrassi. Um, did anyone else watch Endurance? Endurance was like Survivor, but with teenagers. Like it was, it was pretty intense. I remember a few episodes where it got pretty crazy, but I loved that show. Um, and then any show where people go in and clean and organize houses. I loved shows where people would just like go into a house, maybe not even hoarder houses, but just like any house where the family was like too busy to clean and they would take everything out of the house and they would organize it into different um, like categories. Like this is what you're going to sell. This is what you're going to keep. This is what you're going to trash. I, I love organizing things. You can't tell. I've got a very neat room. Uh, so I, I love those shows and like this like now in this day and age there's so many great shows like that on YouTube on Netflix you got the Marie Kondo generation now so it's just prime time for anyone who wants to watch great organization content <laughs> uh, so that's about everything that I had for those kind of favorites um, Gabrielle said do you watch Korean drama slash TV shows I don't I couldn't I watched a few telenovela like Bailey telenovelas when I was younger but really I wasn't too much into them. Um, I remember there was one called El Nino de Mi Corazón. Uh, I watched that like over a winter break when I was in high school. <laughs> I don't remember it too much, but it was kind of just what I would have on like in the background. But I really don't get too much into like those kind of drama shows. I prefer, uh, well, at least now for shows. What are we watching right now? Uh, my boyfriend and I, we just watched Space Force, which is pretty funny. Uh, it had a really a lot of great one-liners and then they had a lot of... Um, like 
scenes where it like got too real with like what our current government is doing it's like one of those things where, like you have to laugh or you'll cry <laughs> kind of things but overall it was a decent show i i think it could have been better but it was still pretty funny so that show what am i watching on my own right now not too much to be honest i really just watch a lot of youtube so i've got a lot of youtube channels that i catch up with uh yeah, and so, like, for me, I really don't watch too much tr traditional TV anymore. So that's about it. Like Gabrielle said, I need organization in my life. <laughs> uh, I mean, when I was a kid, my dream was to have that TV show where I could just go in and clean people's houses because I just like organizing things. Like, if you, if you <laughs> my dream was, like, you want to pay me to tell people what to do and to clean things and organize them, sign me up. Sign me up. <laughs> I love being bossy and cleaning things. All right. So, wow. I think this is the longest live that I've done. But I really want to do more because I've got this awesome new webcam. And I'm just, I love talking with you guys and doing this. So, I do want to do more live streams coming up. Um, I have noticed that this does. Whenever I put my hands on my desk, my camera wiggles. So, I'll work on making that a little bit more um, sturdy. <laughs> I don't know what the actual term would be. But, um... This was a lot of fun. I hope you guys liked the look. This has been one of my favorite looks. And this is actually the reason why I was able to hit pan on so many of those shades was mainly this look. And it looks really nice. And it looks awesome on camera for when I do all of my Zoom meetings for work. And this lipstick, oh, I'm not a huge fan of this lipstick. But I've got a bunch of other lipsticks in this little lipstick book to try. So we'll see. We shall see. So thank you guys. This is so much fun. And uh, I hope you guys had fun in this long live stream. And I hope if you missed it, you can catch it on the replay. Um, I personally, I like waiting for live. I like jumping into live streams if I can. But I personally like listening to live, um, live streams sped up. So if you guys missed it, uh, I would recommend listening to it on like 1.5 replay once this is done and processed. It might take a couple hours because this was almost two hours long. But it's fun. Uh Ooh, okay. Pranika said the Fosters and its spinoff Good Trouble and Once Upon a Time. My best friend loved it. Didn't Brooke, I don't know if Brooke is still in here, but I think Brooke liked Once Upon a Time, but I never got into it. I don't know if that's something I should watch now because I don't know if that's done yet. Um, Gabrielle said, are you, are you using your new webcam right now? It looks great. Yeah. Uh, I, if you can pull this up next to my last live stream, like it's like night and day. It's This is a lot better. And I'm really glad I was finally able to get it because of course, because of COVID, every live, every webcam sold out for months. I've been trying to buy a new webcam for months. <laughs> and I was just now finally able to get one. Uh, Belle said, love the look. I'm glad I got to see it, even if it was in the end. Uh, thanks for coming, Belle. I hope you guys, you can watch the replay. And I'm going to go clean up and get ready for bed. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love each and every one of you. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye.